Welcome to the hop storage room at the Malt Miller. Um, Rob, do you want to tell us a little bit about the varieties and types of hops that we sell here at the Malt Miller? Okay, so we've got a vast range here. We've got a range in both pellet and holy hops, and we do English, European, United States, and New Zealand and Australia. And that's generally how it's broken down on the website. So when the hops come in, how, how do they come in? And then what kind of processes happen here at the Malt Miller? Like most of the other things we do here at Malt Miller, we're buying in massive quantities um, and quite often contracted for many years, in fact, on five years uh, ahead, so that we can get all of the uh, varieties that we need and we know that we've got an actual actual supply. So they come in in bulk sizes that they come in are generally five kilos, maybe 20 kilo uh, bales. They are then opened, packaged into 100 grams and vac packed immediately and it's not just being vac packed we actually nitrogen back flush uh, all of the hops so these are the kind of foil bags that you use and what's the purpose of the foil bags what are these they're, they're known as mylar so they're a, a, a barrier seal it's, it's really important um, that hops are stored correctly um, so one of the things that we need to guard against is the hops oxidizing and this is a, a an oxygen barrier also light is an absolute killer for hops so they're they're an oxygen and light barrier um, perfect packaging for the hops so when the hops are all packaged then they're then stored in the cold store room this cold store room has been one of so I'm so proud to have that here because as a as a homebrew supplier this is extraordinarily rare in the in the homebrew market so we can store all of our either packed or unpacked bulk hops here um, somewhere between four or five degrees which is which is ideal um, as well as kind of like um, what people expect which is leaf and T90 pellets we also have BBC pellets do you want to explain a little bit about the differences between a leaf hop a T90 pellet and a BBC pellet so what has okay, that? Let's, let's start with the with the leaf hops then so leaf hops are basically hops as they come off the hop vine they are dried in the kiln um, and then because they're vac packed and, and they are actually vac packed in the five kilo bales that we that we buy as well so they're actually it looks like they're crushed but they're they're, they're like squashed a compressed a compressed whole flour hop if you're then looking at t90 pellets those whole hops have been forced through a die they end up looking uh, like small and actually different varieties look kind of different but they're, they're, they're small when they're pelletized they actually store much better as as pellet hops they're smaller they take up less space um, there's a really good reason that pretty much every brewery in the world uses with a few exceptions um, uses pellet hops they're just generally easier to use pellets. and then how do BBC pellets compare to T90 what's the difference between those BBC hops uh, this, it was an interesting um, development between the Boston Beer Company and Bath Hass. Bath Hass are one of the one of the biggest top merchants in the world based in, based in Europe. They developed a hop pellet where the the pelletizing of the hop is done at a much much lower temperature. Also they've already stripped some of the hop material out of the hop before it's pelletized so it's actually a stronger a stronger product product. It does mean that they can oxidize quicker uh, than, a, than a standard pellet. So they're not, you won't see every homebrew shop selling them. It's only certain people that can deal with uh, the repackaging of those products properly so that, they, uh, so that they deliver exactly what they promise. Okay, so in addition to the hot pellets that we talked about, there's other hot materials that you can get. So like we have um, hot oils and hot Bittering, um, flex, and CO2 extract. How would these be used, and what are the advantages of using something like this? These are actually really interesting products, and they've come about because of the desire of uh, commercial breweries um, to not lose as much beer when they're dry hopping, and also for consistency. Because we're dealing with a natural product, um, different harvest seasons, the hop varies in alpha acid and, and flavorings. So. These hot products offer a consistent 
method of bittering or adding, adding aroma. They're not for everyone, uh, but they're becoming much, much more popular. And in certain circumstances, when they're used in the correct method, they can be extraordinarily effective.